Welcome to Weld.com. Uh, over the next four weeks, we're going to be talking about gas metal arc welding, modes of metal transfer, and we're going to kind of break things down a little bit. And when I say break things down a little bit, I do need to tell you that we're kind of taking Weld.com in a little bit of a different direction. We're going to concentrate on some processes. We've got some in, enriched visuals and the audio is getting way better. So I just wanted to uh, encourage you to hit the subscribe button and stay tuned because we're going to try to bring some cool content. Plus we're working on some collaborative efforts with some other people around the states here that some cool stuff in education. So um, we want to talk about gas metal arc welding modes of metal transfer. And there's four that are recognized mainly when you rattle them off and it's short circuiting, globular, spray, and pulse spray. Each of them has its place, uh, one of which I don't use a whole lot, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Uh, so this week we want to concentrate on the short circuiting process. It gets its name because the wire comes out of the gun, makes contact with the grounded material, and shorts out. And it does this hundreds of times per second. And that's where you get that, everybody's familiar with that, what they call it, frying baking sound. Uh, it has a distinct sound to it. So, and they're, you know, not to throw things off, it, you can do a lot of things with some arc features and stuff. We just want to keep it real simple and kind of explain how things are set up. So, I want to do some demonstrations on various joints. I have some material laid out here. I'll do some lap welds on some 14 gauge and, and 10 gauge, and we could do thicker than that with the short arc surf, uh, process. Uh, outside corner joints, T welds, and stuff like that. So let's get some gear on and get right to welding. Okay, we're gonna get started with the short circuiting gas metal arc welding process. I'm running off of a ESOB Rebel EMP 215 IC Gas metal arc welding, there are two functions that affect the arc. Voltage and wire feed speed. You gotta think of wire feed speed as a function of amperage. Depends on the type of gas we're running and the diameter of the wire. I like the fact that these are both independent. I also like this particular machine because I have some other controls within here electronically that I can control the arc and that's like a whole nother video. I'm trying to keep this real simple here. So for short circuiting, I'm gonna run some beads here. I'm gonna start out with 17.5 volts, 200 inches a minute on wire feed speed. I'm running 75% argon, 25% CO2. Short circuiting gas metal arc welding can be run on two gases. 75, 25, and just straight CO2, pure CO2. Today we're running off 75, 25, okay? So I, wanna, I just wanna run some beads and quickly change just a few things so you can see it and hear it. And then I wanna start applying it to some actual welds so that you can kinda see where to use this and how it makes sense. Okay, I'm gonna run a couple of beads here. Uh, in case some of you are wondering, where did I come up with these numbers here? Why 17 and a half volts? Why 200 inches a minute? I'm on 030 ER70 S6 wire with 7525. And I've, I've been doing this for so many years. I mean, I understand the process. I read, study, and I've, I've done this so many times. It's kind of, I don't know, not joking, but I know how to use it. Anyway, I, you know, I want to run some demos here and pull the trigger on this and let you see it and hear it. And this is kind of cool, but this is that, that short circuiting. This is that crackling, buzzing sound, that frying bacon. Hopefully I'll get the essence of bacon here up my hood. Pretty stable condition, <clears throat> OK? 
okay? Now, hopefully the audio came through and you heard that real nice. This is on clean material. We've done, we've done videos and demonstrations on dirty versus clean metal, and I'm telling you, it makes a difference. I know a lot of you that know me, you know that I hate to grind. However, when it comes to MIG welding, TIG welding, and, and prepping material, I will do it faithfully, religiously, because it needs to be done. There's nothing worse than running over some of this material, and I'll explain why. I want to run a bead on some dirty material, and I want you to hear it. Hopefully, it's enough of a difference of sound. I know I'm going to see quite a bit here. <clears throat> I heard it, and I see it. This bead lays down nicely. It's nice and round. It has a smooth ripple pattern to it. This bead is peaked. It, ha it looks dirty. It has black stuff on either side, and it sounded a lot different to me. Hopefully you picked up on that. So where do we apply this, <clears throat> this short circuiting mode? I have 14 gauge blasted, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a, uh, just a fillet weld, just so you can kind of see. We can start putting some things together in different joint configurations here. So I'm, I just want to run a fillet weld at these settings on 14 gauge material. Okay, uh, you know, quick little fillet weld here, putting two pieces together. Again, 14 gauge, you know, fairly thin sheet metal. 030 wire. This is a super application. Another one, another simple joint configuration would be uh, outside corner joint. This would be considered heat sensitive because we're thin and we're out here on the outside corner. So let me tack that up and we'll weld that real quick. Okay, I have two pieces of 14 gauge set up in an outside corner joint. After I did the fillet weld, um, just out of the top of my head, I think I want to change a value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to 17 volts and I'm going to drop the wire feed speed down to 180 inches a minute. <clears throat> the reason I'm doing this is I don't want to blow this outside corner joint up. And I may miss, you know, I'm kind of I'm using this from past experience. In common sense, I want the weld to be a little cooler, okay? So, uh, you know, just from experience, I, I just wanna drop this down about a half a volt and I wanna slow the wire feed speed down, which lowers the amperage. The other things I have left here for me to adjust would be travel speed, okay? So, Let's see if we, let's see what happens here. I'll do half of this and see what happens. It should go, it should be pretty close. Hmm. Little wire explosion there at first. I'll easily clean that off. So that was a pretty good guess. You know, we didn't blow this thing up. I had to travel fairly quick. We are fused around the edges of this and we have a little bit of penetration on the back side. Very successful weld joint. Just made a pretty decent weld on here. I went over and buffed that wire explosion thing off there. It popped right off. And after doing this, you know, it was running in there pretty quick and I was traveling pretty fast. I want to do something different now. I want to I'm telling you that we, we, we're able to change voltage and wire feed speed. I like the voltage where it's at. Because this crowned up a little bit, I wanna slow the wire feed speed down. So I'm gonna go from 180 down to 160, and I should be able to travel a little slower. I expect the weld to be a little more fluid, and that's about it. Again, this is thin metal. We're not trying to do anything special with it. We don't need a great big weld. So let's see what happens here. I 
I like that reaction better. It was still in the short, a good short circuiting. First one just seemed, I was able to go a little slower. The first one seemed really fast to me and keeping up with it. Barely, barely wiggling the wire. So again, we're melting the edges over the top. It's not a critical weld. We still have penetration on the backside. So that's 14 gauge sheet metal. Uh, we could do lap welds about these settings because we're not trying to build up. We're just trying to fuse things together. I'm going to move these pieces away and we're going to go to 10 gauge or eighth inch material. Okay, um, we did the 14 gauge and we did outside corner joint and a, a T weld. And so I've, I've turned the machine back to our original base that we started this video and that was 17.5 and 200 inches a minute. 17.5 volts, 200 inches a minute. And from there I just want to, I want to leave it and I want to do this outside corner joint on 10 gauge material. I have a whisper of gap in here. I want to call it a 30 second. So not much at all. And again, for camera angle and <clears throat> speed, I like to prop these little rascals up. You're going to be able to see that there, camera guy. Good condition. Um, we can see where I rolled my wrist a little bit here on the table. You can tell a little bit of variation in travel speed. No big deal. Nice weld that fused together. We've got a little bit of penetration on the backside. Settings probably would not do me any better as far as penetration, material prep, or the gap opening would probably get that done. Since I've already finished that on the outside of this, this outside corner, I could come in here and quickly demonstrate a fillet weld on the inside corner going downhill slightly. Ran a little bit on the inside here with those same settings couple of things here, you know, the, uh, the material was heated from doing the weld on the outside first, but this thing blended nicely. I want to demonstrate a lap weld next, and this is 10 gauge material. Uh, the first part of this weld, I'll leave the settings exactly like they are. 17 and a half volts, 200 inches a minute wire feed speed. So I left those settings alone. I like the sound of it. I like what I'm seeing here. I was able to move comfortably as far as travel speed. Uh, the weld profile fits across here. There's a whole video series on gun angle and electrical stick out, you know, nozzle distance and all that kind of stuff. But again, simple stuff, just travel along, run straight lines. Width is travel speed. So, you know, that's the first part of the 10 gauge lap weld. Could I change settings and do something different? Sure. And we can experiment. Uh, you know, I get over to this T weld on the same thickness of material. Then we could play with some settings there, go up. I don't want to go down any in values. I could just probably go up because that particular weld always tends to take a little more energy you can pour and you can go faster you can pour a little more heat input into it so for a variation let's change this and go to 18.2 volts 225 on the wire feed speed a little different uh, profile not much this one was obviously a little hotter wetter um, 
I traveled just a bit quicker. But, uh, you know, they both work. And if I turn this over, neither one of them are melted through the base metal, the parent metal. I kind of like this hotter one better, just the way it looks, you know, the profiles across here. And I think the edges are burning in just a little better. So again, we're talking about 10 gauge sheet metal, eighth inch material, it's not critical. So I like these values. I'm, I'm going up slightly from my base. So I think I wanna, I think I wanna go into this um, fillet or this T-weld here, this fillet weld. These are both fillet welds technically, by the way. And so I wanna, I wanna make this weld, one of them in the horizontal position as it's, as it's sitting right here and the other one kind of downhill just to just to show some quick applications here and what you can do okay I like this profile here. I probably, you know, looking at it and listening to it, probably go up a little bit in wire feed speed, but I think it's fine. Now, when we turn this and go up like this, and I probably will turn this up a little bit in wire feed speed. I want it to be a little more active because I'm going downhill. Uh, this weld laid down pretty nice. Uh, I went from 225 up to 235 and I was able to travel faster. Again, I'm just on the back side of what I just got through welding on. Um, the material was warm. So, you know, that's, that's something to talk about. We, we can get into so many of these variations and subtle things that actually happen. I'm just trying to bring some awareness about voltage changes, wire feed speed changes. We're on 030 material and <clears throat> it's pretty versatile when you when you go from soup, something super thin to some fairly heavy material i have one more quick demo and we've done this a lot on camera we've done bin tests and etching and x-ray and all kinds of stuff and it's 100 percent fusion on groove material this is quarter inch i've beveled it to 30 degrees cleaned it put a 16th root face on it uh, 330 second gap it looks like and I'm gonna set it up like this and just kind of slightly run it downhill short circuiting 030 try to get a hundred percent root fusion 17.7 17.8 volts 235 on the wire feed speed Okay, I did this, I set this up here and uh, man, really strange. Set it up so the camera guy, and you could see it and everything, so I'm actually welding backhanded and completely weird for me anyway. Uh, I should have switched hands and tried it right-handed, but got to going downhill, outran my wire, shoved it through there. Got to stay right on the leading edge of the pool when you do, you get 100% root fusion. I jumped forward, I shot the wire through there and shot it into dead air space and there's no arc at that time. So, you know, I'm usually good at screwing up at least once during every video and I man up to it and leave it there. So that's what happens, you know. You get going too fast or you jerk forward or something. Smooth transition, you can put some beautiful beads in there. Now, since, uh, since we've created this, since we've created this groove, then I should be able to run a, uh, a, a one more pass in here and fill this all in with short circuiting. I'm gonna go uphill now. So 235, 17.8. I wanna go down in voltage because I'm gonna be carrying a fair amount of material. I wanna go down in voltage 
and I'm going to drop the wire feed speed just a little bit. I want to cool the pool, so to speak. Okay. So by common sense and my experience, I'm going to go down in volts, down in wire feed speed. So we dropped, this, uh, dropped the values down a little bit because we were going to be carrying a fair amount of metal <clears throat> and uh, to me that worked out pretty nice. This thing is in here with good edges. It's got some nice reinforcement to it. We clean this off. This thing will, this thing will bend test x-ray all, all day long. Done it a million times. No worries. You know, these are some practical applications of what you can do with short circuiting and there's a lot of things to talk about, some variables. Main thing is clean your weld material for short circuiting, clean it and all of it for, for that matter to go faster, you get better fusion. Uh, I fielded a, a, a message last night. One of the things we talk about is, well, how far does, does the nozzle distance affect what's going on? Yes, it does. So for short circuiting, and globular and some of these other processes, they, they matter. Think of it this way. Electrical stick out from the contact tip to the arc for short circuiting, keep it around three eighths of an inch. About three eighths of an inch is a good all around. That's where I've got this clipped off. Another thing is to clean your nozzle and clip the end of the wire off. It, it's, it, you get better starts. Make sure you have a good ground. So. You know, these are, these are some things, this process is very versatile and we use it a lot in manufacturing, do some repairs, some fabrication, a lot of hobby work. Hope you found the material educational. If you like what we're doing, check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching Weld.com. I'm Bob Moffat with Cali College. Um, God dang kids. I like the bacon, bacon, bacon. Check them, like, 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 like. It's kind of ugly. For the camera guy. What? Go ahead. Wait a minute. Huh?